What is going on you guys? Hope you're having a fantastic day. It is Saturday here, it is beautiful outside, and today's topic, we are swapping my battery from the front in the engine bay to the trunk. I've been talking about it for a while, and it's finally gonna happen. I need a few more supplies. I'm gonna go pick up in a little while. Go to Greg's house, we're gonna get it knocked out. Before we do any of that stuff, we need to check on the Mark V. Hopefully I fixed that oil leak from yesterday, but I think we did. At first glance, I'm not seeing anything new. That's not, a, that's like a piece of gum or something. That's not anything staining, so I don't see anything new. I uh, got the car jacked up. I'm going to go underneath it where we can see, but I think we're good. So very good news. Um, just got underneath the car, put it back down now. Uh, there's no oil dripping at all, so we effectively fixed our problem. Thankfully, it was just a loose oil filter, nothing more than that. Now I can throw some more oil back in it. We threw about a quarter or so low, and we'll be good to go. The Mark V is 100% good to go, which is awesome. Now I have to go get some parts for this. I already have the long uh, cable and like terminal thing. I need to go from the battery to the very back. But I still need two like hoop um, terminals, a fuse box thing, a battery box with a tie down, and I think that's it. This is what I have now. This will be going from the front to the battery in the back. And I need another one of these fuse boxes right here. I need two more terminals, and then I think that's it. But yeah, Danny was so nice to give me this. So that would be going from the front to the back. And then I need a few more things to run from this terminal here down to the starter, and I'll need another ground for the back, but won't be too hard. I just gotta say, I just have not gotten tired of the sound yet. Ah, oh, I just sound, I just, I have, it's so good, so good. All right, this is my first stop here in St. Cloud at a place called Todd's Audio. They do a lot of music, stuff like that. Um, I picked up a new distributor. I said fuse box earlier. I don't know why I said that, but it's a power distributor. I have a one in and two out, so that'll work for that. I got two copper hoop terminals to go to my starter, um, some heat shrink, and then all I need now is a battery uh, box and with the tie-down strap, and we should have everything we need. All finished up at AutoZone at this point. I have everything I need. I got a battery box with a tie down. Um, I got two more uh, battery terminal cables or the little terminal pieces. And then I got two more just uh, the hoop uh, terminals to go on some more wires if we need them. So I have four hoop terminals in total, uh, two battery terminals, um, the big gauge wire to the rear, uh, the distributor, and that should be the power distributor. And that should be all I need to get this done. Unfortunately, now Greg left for lunch. So now I need to find something to do to kill some time until he gets back. So I couldn't exactly figure out anything to do, so I'm kind of just sitting here in the AutoZone parking lot, chilling in my AC. It's also, um, it's raining, that's good for stuff, and I'm uh, watching the YouTube, so yeah, just, we're just here. Yep. Thank you, Florida. Thank you. Update. I'm freaking bored! It's raining harder. This isn't looking good. Uh, now I'm hungry. I'm gonna get food. I'm tired of sitting here. We're gonna get food. I hope you guys can see, but there's an Audi TT over there with the biggest wing. What is that? Oh my gosh. All right, the food has been acquired because Checkers has the best fries ever. Um, honestly, the drive through was a very bad idea. Everything's out here is wet. I need to dry that off real quick. Um, but it's raining like harder and harder. I don't know if we're going to done today. I'm hoping we still get it done today, but like right now, it's not looking too good. Yo, so I'm sitting here eating my food and I feel something hit me in the foot. Yo, there's water dripping. Look, look! What's your deal, car? Why? Where are you coming from? That's really stupid. I wonder, look at that. What's happening? Knock it off. Oh, this rain, Florida, you're killing me today. So Greg's still not at home. It's still pouring. My car is now leaking on the inside somehow. At least it's not a rubber mat, but Today is just not going as I planned so far. It's doing very, very wrong. At least I have all the parts for my battery um, relocate swap, but I don't know we're gonna get done with it today. I have no idea, but I'm kind of concerned about this leak now because that's really irritating. All right, so I made it to a, um, a car wash here to get the car out of the rain. I need to figure out why it's leaking from up here, wherever it's leaking from, I don't know. I just drove from Checkers back to here. Like half of St. Cloud right now is flooded like bad. I drove some deep water, thank you we're good still. Um, Greg's still at home. I don't know what this man's doing. He's staying forever. Um, but yeah, today's just not going well, guys. Not going well so far. So the only thing I can think of where it's leaking from is if you look right down there, that right there is the hood latch cable, and there was water. Like, you can see where the water is by. I can only imagine the water is going through um, there. So I'm about to discover some tape or something like that or silicone. But I think that's it. There wasn't too much water coming into the car. Like, if you look over here, like, there's a little bit that has dripped down but nothing crazy. That's over the course of like maybe 45 minutes. That's not that bad. And you can see where it was right here. 
and it's coming from the top. I think it's from the cable. I don't see anything else um, up here that'd be leaking. So that's my first guess is that it's going through the cable right here, at least around the outside of it. So I think leak wise, we're good to go. I think it's just that little grommet up there. We'll fix that, not a big deal. Greg takes me, he's on his way home right now. So we'll head over there. And then the rain's actually starting to clear up. So say fingers, say a prayer with fingers crossed that we'll be able to get this done today because this has not gone well so far. It's been a long, a long day so far. This wasn't supposed to take this long. So hopefully we get this done. Made it to Greg's house. Actually pulled in the exact same time he pulled in. It's kind of funny. All right, so we got our power distributor, new battery terminals. We have these connectors to the terminals here. We have these two here. Some heat shrink, a battery tie down, my cable to the back, and my battery box. This is essentially all you will need to relocate your battery to wherever you want to put it. You want to put it on the roof, put it on the hood. This is what you need. We're also going to be using a torch and a soldering gun to be connecting wires and things. So here's some of our soldering stuff here. So today's goal is to move the battery from here, get all this area cleaned up, and put it into the trunk here in the back. And put our battery box here. I think it's going to go right here in the corner. Out of the way. Eventually we're doing a new trunk setup, but the battery will still be here in the corner. It's kind of just out of the way. And I might do like maybe like a false wall kind of thing. So you can't see it. But this is where it's going to go from now, right there. The first step in relocating your battery is to take your battery out. For the Mark 3s, you'll need a 10 for the terminals and a 13 for the um, the battery holder down there, and then it comes right out. Once your battery's out, there are four more uh, bolts that hold in your battery tray. There's one, two, three, and then four. And then once that comes out, we're well on our way. And after your four bolts are out, um, you need to unhook some of the terminal, some of the cables out of the latch. There's one on the bottom here too, to go on the inside. And once all your cables are out of the tray, you can pull it out. And just like that, it's out. Look how much better it looks. I mean, it's filthy down here for sure. But we're gonna fix that. All right, the first thing we're doing, we're taking off the, the ground. We're gonna be cutting it and making it go like under the frame right here somewhere, making it shorter, because we don't need the terminal anymore. We just need to be grounded somewhere. So we're gonna cut the ground right about here or so, and then right underneath this piece right here, and use a bolt and screw it right in there. Um, and that'll be our ground kind of hidden away. And it's cut, just like that. The old ground is out, and this one over here, so you unbolt this one, it screws in over there on the corner. Take that one out, and then you just cut it, and we will relocate it. Also make sure wherever you're putting your grounds, you want no paint on the area, you want bare metal. If not, you have some problems. So make sure wherever it is, sand it out really good, get all the paint off before you ground it there. This is our ground cable. You can see the side that goes to the starter has the terminal on it. We're adding another one to this side so we can ground it to the frame. That way that's shorter and cleaner. So while Greg is attaching this to this end here, I'm gonna use the shop vac real quick and clean out that side of the engine bay. Yeah. It's gross in here. We need to fix that. The vacuum mostly worked for the big stuff, but there's still some stuff in here I couldn't get to, so I have the air compressor now, and we're gonna shoot everything everywhere. All right, Greg has the ground all trimmed up here. Uh, heating up the terminal. The fancy science stuff. It's very hot. Nice. So what we did with this, Greg filled up the entire back side of the terminal with solder. Um, so it's up to the top, then you heat it up again to make it liquid. Uh, push your uh, wire through it, and then heat it up again, and then now it is one. Now it is one. So this is our new modified and shortened ground. The original one going to the starter. Um, the new one that's going to be going to the frame. All right, so what Greg just did is use his wire brush there to get all the paint off the back side of here where the ground's gonna be going to because like I said before, you don't wanna have any paint in between your connection. You want just straight metal. You can drill new holes for the grounds. We're just using an existing one for right now. It makes it a little bit easier and one of the existing bolts, but you can put the ground literally wherever you wanna put it. All right, you can see the top here, but you can't see the ground wires right there going up and around and right underneath here. So super sneaky out of the way. And now we're gonna be getting into the power side of it. We're not using this anymore because that doesn't work. That's the, the alarm for the car or the hood latch alarm. So that's coming off. And then these two, right, the top two need to go to the starter. Yep, they'll be connected to the starter. This one, we don't need any more because right, this so, is gonna be run to. So the big back one's back. going away. The two smaller ones are getting hooked into right up here by the, uh, the starter. And then the rest of it's going to the back. The positive is now out. 
And now we're going to reroute these two to over there, and then we'll basically be done for the most part of the front until running the wires to the back, and we're almost there. And in even better news, Danny just texted me a little while ago saying he has a working reverse sensor switch. So while we're here doing all this in the car, he's going to stop by and drop that off for me. So that's awesome killing two birds with one stone. We'll fix the reverse lights today and swap the battery to the trunk. The day's getting better. It was, it was going downhill really fast earlier because my car was leaking, it was pouring, and it wasn't going that well. But now it's getting better. We're doing good. Right now, before moving to the back, we're kind of just trying to reroute some of these wires, make it look cleaner. Um, I just learned that little box over there, right there, is cruise control. I didn't know that. Mine cruise control does not work, so I mean, we need to fix that. I want cruise control in this car. But that's the cruise control solenoid thing. Didn't know I was there. Learned, every time I'm with Greg, I learn something new about these cars. These things spin and go up and down. I learned lots of fancy stuff. <laughs> lots of nice things. All right, while Greg is wire tucking and moving things and snapping stuff like that, I'm going to pull, pull all of my uh, driver's side door these out of the car so we can start running that red wire through here through the back one and then into the trunk to where the battery's gonna be over here all right we got the wire through oh, sorry if you look over there the wire is going through right that far there's grommet there right where Greg's hand is a grommet back there right in there you can see is where we're pushing the tiny one the wire through and I have it down on this side right there I'm gonna go ahead and pull it through the car and then get all tucked a bit underneath here. Now we have our power cable going up here to the starter there. Running through the firewall into there. Gonna go through this side, through here, and then into the trunk to the battery. And then we'll be using our power distributor thing up here, right, Greg? Yeah. To connect to those. What we're doing with this, our little power distributor thing here, we have two wires here, one to go on the right side, One's on the left side, so both of these will go into there like that. And then we'll have one of the wires like this coming out of this side, going to the starter. That will give power to these as well. So everything will have power. And then once all this is all hooked up, we'll tuck this underneath the frame somewhere so you can't see it as well. All right, so both of our new power are right here to the starter. Those are on our little distributor boxes down there. Most of these wires got tucked up under here. We'll do more later on. Um, this side's looking a lot cleaner now. We're just trying to figure out some more wires. Uh, hoses to that, but that's done up in the front. Moving into the car, we have our wire all inside with these ones going to the back. Back to here, I have it underneath this and going through there. And then up around to back here. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it through here just yet, but I have at least here ready to go. My reverse light switch arrives. And here we have a working reverse light sensor switch thing. So now that's good. Well, my head's all popped, we'll do this today. Volkswagen, 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 we take it over. So with the wire being here, all we need to add at this point is our uh, distributor fuse box, whatever this thing is, along with our new ground, and then one of these. We have our negative connection hooked up right there. We need one more of these. One two of the, more. Uh, two more of these? So two more of these, no, we got from, just one more, right? Just one? One more. One more. We need one more of these from AutoZone. The ones I got from the first place are actually too small. So we need, we're gonna need one more of these, and then we will be just about done. So bad news, this is the new sensor. This is my old sensor. If you look, um, that sensor is missing the threads because they're now snapped off in there. I barely torqued it down and like it, I felt it spin and now it's all broken. So I almost had a new sensor and now I don't. I'm really, literally just not destined to have reverse lights for any reason. <laughs> so now I gotta figure out how to get this out of there. You and Larry should not be your <sighs> I'm just, this is the first time I've ever seen something like that. I, mean, I barely turned it too, it's ridiculous. Uh, I'm just not destined to have reverse lights for any reason. I'm honestly extremely disappointed right now. I was this close, this close to having reverse lights and now, now they're gone. So we're going to the store right now to get another terminal connector, um, one of the hoop ones. And while we're there, I'm just gonna order a new sensor. Hopefully I won't break that one. Hopefully I can get that thread out of there because that's gonna be irritating. And I was so close. Back from AutoZone again, got our two more of our connectors here. That's the last thing we needed, we can get it all finished up. So this here needs a terminal put on it, that way I can go to the distributor thing. From there, it can go, one side will go to here, and then from this side will go to the positive side of the battery. This one over here will go to the negative side, and then off to the wall, find some metal to screw it into, and then we'll be done. And now I have to figure out a way to get that out of there, because that's not good. Those threads are now snapped off inside there. Ugh. All right, there was my new reverse sensor. There's the threads that I snapped off somehow. So I'm putting the old one back in yet again. I am just not destined to have reverse lights. Uh, Ripper right now. What if I can just like, 
glue that back together and then call it a day. Probably not. Oh well. Our last terminal is on. I can feed this back through here. Um, we can get that put in and we're just about done. Where's my box? Are you still my box? Oh, there it is. There's my box. We have our we have our power um, coming through the side of the carpet there, going to the battery for there. Um, right there, we're just standing away is where the ground's gonna go. Everything will be kind of tucked away behind the carpet here, and pretty hidden. All right, now we have our fuse in place. I was on a power trigger before, but this is actually indeed a fuse right here. Uh, the you don't have to have one of these, but the point of this is, if something happens with the battery, it'll stop right there versus going to the front of the car. So I think it's good to have one of these. Now that the fuse and everything's hid back there, we have it coming through. We need to add our positive terminal to this one. And then we need to put our ground to the wall somewhere. This one right here to the wall somewhere. And then we're just about there. So close. Our, our ground is now in place. This is an existing hole. Like you see all these holes are already here. We just found one of the holes that we already had and found a screw to fit inside it. So that's where the ground's going there. And then we'll come from this side and hit it to the battery. Our, our very last thing to do is install our battery box here. Um, these right here get drilled to the floor. One and two. The box is on top of those, right, Greg? Mm -hmm. The box the box is on top of these, right? On top of these? Yes. And then this is my strap that goes through. These two around the box will hold the box down like that. So those go down first, drill those to the floor, put the box on top, take your strap, wrap it around said box, tie it down so that way when you're driving your bag doesn't go flying around everywhere because that's not good. Alright, our strap mounting brackets are in. Now we're going to feed the strap underneath it. That will go around the box. And then all we need to do now is get the last terminal on the positive, get the box in, and that's just about it. All right, the battery is in, both our terminals are on. Before we go ahead and put, the, put it back in the box and tie everything down, we're gonna start the car, make sure we did this properly, and then we can go on with putting everything back together. All right, we have lights, those work. Let's see if the car will start. Let's see. Okay, we're good. A little slow starting, but it runs. It does run. And my AC is still working, that's a good thing. All right, so oh, the strobe lights. <laughs> All right, the battery is completely in. The car starts. We did a proper job, thankfully. It's all tied down. I mean, for my car, I don't really need that because I'm not doing like motorsports and it won't be flying around, but it's good to still tie it down. So that's done there. Greg, with your lights, you want to find me the front of the car? This is nice. And the front is much cleaner. Sorry, it's dark, but this whole side, we'll be getting to this and cleaning it up better. Um, I got my old sensor back in, but I'll be going through making this look a lot nicer and smoothed out. And let's try and clean it off first, and then we'll go through and paint it if we can. But it's way nicer now. There's so much more room for activities. This is good. I'm glad we did this. Good stuff. That's that, that. Yeah, the next thing's up for this car. We're going to cut this, the old hood hinge. That's going to get cut off. All these little ones are getting all trimmed down. Trim like all this stuff here. Trim it all off. Get a wire wheel. Sand all this garbage out of there. And then we'll paint it. And it's look fancy. But see, all you really need for this is you need the distributor thing, power distributor for there. Run your lines to your um, starter. You need one line to go to the rear. You need to hook your ground from this to the frame. And then obviously you need like, the terminals and stuff. But it wasn't too hard to do. It took us a little while because we were trying to make, do things nice. But overall pretty simple. All right, you guys, that is going to be the vlog. Absolutely massive shout out to Greg for always being able to help me do all this kind of stuff that I have like a general idea how to do, but Greg just knows basically everything on Mark III, so huge shout out to Greg for always helping me out. If you don't follow him on Instagram, I'll put it down below. Go show him some love. He always helps me out. We also got started really late on this project, so sorry that it was so dark and I couldn't show you guys that much. Hopefully, I explained it in a good enough way that you guys can do it on your own. I'll put everything you need to do it on the description below, all the items that I use for mine personally, and you can do the same thing. And and then tomorrow when it's daytime, I'll give you guys a better look at the engine bay and the trunk and how it's all set up. At this point, the engine bay's come pretty, pretty far. Honestly, if you've been here since the beginning of the channel, um, back when this is a normal ABA, there's wires everywhere, the big old air box. It's come a good ways since then, and I love how far it's come. Still have more things to do, but as of right now, it's looking pretty nice. I love having the battery just out of the way. There's so much new space that's just all space for activities. And I'm in talk to this website right now. They have a lot of billet and polish items. Might be doing some of their stuff in the engine bay, so stay tuned for that. If that does happen, of course, I'll share it with you guys. Still got to go through and get my grinder and grind down all those little like tabs that are in there now. But it's looking way better. Um, we degreased it a little bit. I tried to wipe it down as best I could. The original black paint came back a little bit, 
but eventually once I get everything grinded down and sanded smooth, we'll be taping off the engine, like covering it up, and then spraying the sides black so look nice and new. But like I said, that's gonna be the video. Hopefully I did a halfway decent job explaining this to you guys. Um, it's kind of hard to film and work sometimes, and I try to explain it as best I could. I know I probably used the wrong terminology um, for some things. I get kind of confused sometimes. I don't know everything. I'm not perfect, but I did my best I could. So hopefully it does help you out. If it does, hit that thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.